All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about part two of thermochemistry, talking about molar enthalpy. Enthalpy is also known as delta H, and we're always taking it from the molar perspective here in this general chemistry class. So in other higher versions of the chemistry, you can do other derivatives of this, but in this class, we're gonna stick with the molar version. So enthalpy is the flow of energy here, the flow of energy how it transfers from one system to another. Heat exchange, so we're talking about systems interacting with each other, likely in a reaction. And in this class, we're gonna talk about things under constant pressure when these things are in contact with each other. That constant pressure is used to help make it standard for manipulations in this class. You can manip manipulate the pressure to make the reaction behave a certain way. So we want to make sure we're consistent in our representations. So when you're talking about the transfer of energy, you can talk about it in a different flavors or different varieties of ways. You can talk about the enthalpy of a reaction, the enthalpy of combustion, the enthalpy of formation, a fusion, a vaporization. Any way you slice it, enthalpy is measured in kilojoules per mole reaction. You can also shorthand that to kilojoules per mole. So either way, when you're talking about enthalpy or delta H, that's your unit. All right. So you can talk about enthalpy <clears throat> from several sources, from stoichiometry to calimetry, from a standard table of values, Hess's law, you can pull up the bond energies. However, comma, in this classroom, we're going to talk about it in three different perspectives using our good old Stochi. Yes, it hasn't went anywhere. We'll learn about calimetry later. And we're going to take about, talk about it from the perspective of Hess's law. We'll learn about Hess's law within this unit. But right now, let's stick to the basics. The easiest way I like to do it is from stoichiometry. So that's what I usually stick with. And here's your formula. Your formula for delta H or that enthalpy. Make sure to say it with me now. Enthalpy. Enthalpy, you're talking about moles times this fancy proportion here with heat term and coefficient. Your heat term and coefficient are the relationship of your reaction producing or taking in that energy. And your moles and your coefficient must always, always match. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your moles and your coefficient must always match. You got to be talking about the same thing here. Apples to apples comparison, always. So we must be talking about apples to apples. So this and this must be from the same substance here. You can't be talking about different substances. And when you do this math and you come out with a negative value, that's when heat is released also known as an exothermic reaction. It feels a little bit special to us. Now, when you do this math here and you come up with a positive number, you're talking about an endothermic reaction where heat is absorbed or heat is going in to the reaction, okay? So this is two frameworks that you always have to have. So let's put those frameworks to use. Let's talk about it. What is the molar enthalpy change if 17.54 grams of sulfur reacts with oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide? All right, cool. I got my standard chemical equation here. I'm going to really quickly check for balancing. Two S's. I see two S's. I see six oxygens. I see six oxygens. Groovy, cool. All my elements are in sync. However, comma, I got a new kid on the block. What is that? That, friends, is a kilojoule product, which tells me my heat term, that's what our heat term is. If my heat term is on the product side, so of course we know this is reactants, and this is products. If the heat term exists on the product side, it's an exothermic reaction, all right? 
that's where you can use to conceptualize what you're doing and validate your work. If the heat term, the heat produced, is a product, meaning it's going out, it has to be an exothermic reaction. So if heat term is a product, it's an exothermic reaction. It equals an exothermic reaction. It means it's going out. Go back to, thank you. Going out to the world. Now let's do some math. So I told you your formula is as such. So let's make it work. I got 17.54 grams of sulfur. So I don't know, I gotta do some stoichiometric math here. Grams of sulfur times, I need to be in moles of sulfur. So I'm gonna pull that molar mass off my periodic table over here to my left of sulfur. 32.07 grams of sulfur. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Now I can politely get Grams of sulfur to cancel, grams of sulfur cancel. I'm sitting in moles of sulfur just like I need to be. So I carry on. I'm going to build this part now. Times my heat term. What is my heat term? My heat term is my product of that kilojoules. And I know it's a product because it's on the product side. And it's going out, so it has a negative value. It's a negative value. If it's a product, it's a negative value. That's what you get out of the reactions, what's coming out. And we know that these two... Oh, no, no, no. There we go. That one and that one must match. So I'm in moles of sulfur, so my coefficient of sulfur is what? My coefficient of sulfur comes from right there. The coefficient is the front number. You're just worried about this number right here. Two. Ta-da. Let's circle that right there so we're clear on where that came from comes from the balanced chemical equation. Now, just run some math. Whole top, whole bottom, same shenanigans we're used to. The exact same shenanigans we're used to. I'm going to use this fancy alpha lock here. You don't have to at all. You can keep it, get the whole, whole, multiply the whole top, get an answer, multiply the whole bottom, get an answer. That works the exact same way. So here, we get a funny answer of negative 202.74642968512. What's my unit? Kilojoules per mole. All right, lovely. However, comma, that's too many numbers. We always move reference sheet. Oh, reference sheet out the way. Now everything's going left. Let's get it back together. Now, that is far too many numbers. So, how many sig figs do we report? I see right here we have four sig figs. That's the only answer I'm given, so I gotta report four sig figs. Count them out with me. One, two, three. That one makes four, and that four is not gonna do very much to that seven. So we have an approximation of negative 202.7 kilojoules per mole, and that is a negative value, a negative delta H, is an exothermic reaction. 
Always, 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 your final answer will be sign number unit and a reaction type. Each answer has four parts. One, two, three, four. You don't, you will lose credit. I promise. It comes in handy later. I promise there is a reason behind my madness. That is a full and proper answer. Always, always, always include sign, number, unit, and reaction type. So if it's a positive delta H, I should see a plus sign in front of it. That lets me know you can synthesize what you're doing and you can rationalize it. Let's try it again. Pause this video and give it a shot. I know it's daunting. You got this. Give it a pause. Try. Do it. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how we did. So how much molar heat will be transferred if 553.81 grams of carbon react with hydrogen to produce hexane or C6H6? So evaluate. Where is my heat term in my equation? My heat term is politely sitting right here. You're looking for that weird thing in the chemical equation. Let's split it. I see my arrow there. So doop doop. This is a reactant side. And this is a product side. So ask yourself, is your heat term a reactant or a product? Your heat term is a reactant. So therefore, so three dots in a triangular fashion means therefore. Therefore, if it's a product, I mean a reactant, that means it's endothermic. You're looking at an endothermic reaction here. So, get busy. Your delta H equals moles of substance times your heat term over that same coefficient. Let's pull and chug. I'm given 53.81 grams of carbon. I can't do no stoichiometry with grams. Got to get to moles, so using some stoichiometric math here, I'm going to do one mole of carbon over that molar mass. I'm going to pull off my periodic table over here to my left. And seeing that that politely goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, I'm left in moles of carbon, so I'm sitting in moles right here. So now I get to build this part, I get to build my fancy conversions or my heat term assessments. So my heat term is 149.03 kilojoules. Notice how it's positive on this side. It's a reactant, so heat must go in, so you have to provide it. It's a positive. Over that same coefficient, what coefficient are we talking about? Where is Mr. Cole getting these numbers from? I'm talking about carbon. So I just turned carbon into moles and my heat term is talking about carbon. So my moles and my coefficient must match. So I'm talking about the coefficient in front of carbon, six. Run some math really quickly. You can do whole top over whole bottom, or if you have a TI-84 or better, you can do this alpha fraction I'm doing for you. You don't have to. Whole top over whole bottom math will work just the exact same. So I'm going to get an answer here, 111.28645. Eight, seven, six, and change kilojoules per mole. I know it's positive, so that's an endothermic reaction. All right, that's far too much numbers. It's ugly. How many sig figs is that? 
that be four sig figs. So I'm going to cut it at four sig figs. One, two, three, four. That eight does do something to that two. So you're talking about a delta H approximation of 111.29 kilojoules per mole. And that is endothermic. It has a positive delta H value, which makes it endothermic. Sign number. I have a sign number, proper unit, and reaction condition or reaction type. All four bits and bobs are present for a correct and full answer. You must, you must, you must include all necessary parts and pieces of this setup. It will help you later. I promise. Here we go. On to the next. I have one mole. I know that's hard to see. Let's fix that real quick. I have one mole of methane that is burned at a constant pressure of 80... At constant pressure where 890 kilojoules, of mole, kilojoules per mole of energy is released. Calculate when the delta H, when... 5.8 grams of methane, CH4, is burned. All right, easy, breezy, beautiful. I don't even need a chemical equation because I'm given everything I need to know. It just told me outright that this much energy of energy is released. If it's released, where is it going? It's going out, which would make it a product, which would make this reaction exothermic. That part I know, so that means I have a negative value here. So that means I have, oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. I have negative 890 kilojoules per mole as a heat term as a heat term let's build in what else I need to know delta H equals moles times heat term over that coefficient now how many grams of methane am I talking about that's also given to me. So start your stoichiometry. 5.8 grams of methane. Let me get back here. That's CH4 times, I'm gonna turn those grams into moles. So one mole of methane. And let's get that inventory going. I have one carbon, carbon is 12.01 hydrogen, so I got four of them. Ta-da, look mom, I can store geometry. Now, I'm very politely sitting in moles of carbon. Let me not use that color. Let me change up my color here. Moles of carbon. I'm in moles of carbon. I mean methane, I'm in moles of methane. So I'm looking for to build this part. Certain things have to match. So build it as you see it. Heat term is what kind of heat term? I've established that this much energy is released, which makes it a heat term that is negative. All right, kilojoules per mole. Now I need to figure out my coefficient. I'm talking about methane. 
I was given a molar value of methane. When one mole of methane, so that means my coefficient of methane is one. Ta-da, that's it, that's all. Run some math here. 5.8 times one times negative 890. Over here, it's all divided by 16.042. Comes to a whopping negative value Negative 321.78032666426 kilojoules per mole. And negative is an exothermic reaction. But that is far too many numbers. I need to evaluate my significant figures here. How many significant figures is this? I see two. I see two, and that's a constant value right here from our e equation we derive. So that one doesn't play effects into our significant figure calculations. So what we're looking at are these two, which tell us I have two significant figures to report. So I must cut this number at two sig figs. So one sig fig, two sig fig, and that one's not going to do very much to that two. So delta H is approximate to negative 320 kilojoules per mole reaction. That is an exothermic reaction because it is negative heat term. And I know it's negative heat term because I say it's released. And that's it. That's all. That's how you calculate molar enthalpy using this here formula. Remember, you have to be in a mole before you use this formula. And your moles and your coefficients must match. They must match. And your answer is a four-part answer. You have to tell me your sign, your number, the proper unit, and your reaction type or your reaction condition as endothermic, exothermic. Is heat going in as a reactant or is heat coming out as a product? You get those values from evaluating your negative or positive delta H. Notice every one of my delta H's has a sign attached to it. Has a sign attached to it. So therefore it tells me clearly that I know that a negative delta H is an exothermic reaction and a positive delta H is an endothermic reaction. So positive delta H, heat is going in. Negative delta H, heat is coming out. And you use your stoichiometry skills to evaluate molar enthalpy. And that's it, that's all for this time around. If you have questions, my email is always available. I'll see you on the next go around.